Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a technique that comes from Korea. It's called Kumbu, and it's an ancient technique where gold is bonded to silver. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, this is a great way to enhance your silver jewelry pieces. In other words, a little bit of gold can go a long way to make your piece look a lot more exciting and you can get a better price for it as well. Let me show you some of the tools that you're going to need to do this. Now, the first thing I want to show you is an ugly hot plate. Yes, it's just a regular hot plate. Now, we're going to be heating our pieces on the hot plate because we don't really need to get beyond a temperature of, say, 800 degrees. Now, that's a really hot temperature, so do pull your hair back, pull up your sleeves, and protect your skin. You don't want to burn yourself on this little gizmo here. Now, moving across the table, the first thing that I have over here is gum tragacanth. Gum tragacanth is used in Japanese cuisine in order to thicken soups. It's kind of like a cornstarch. Or if you've been trained in oil painting, you might recognize the term gum arabic. It's basically a bonding material that's natural that will burn away. Now I have a little, just the lid of a jar just to be able to handle some of the gum tragacanth and the gold pieces I'm going to use. And here I've pre-mixed a little container of gum tragacanth with distilled water. So this is probably about a quarter cup of distilled water with just a pinch of the gum tragacanth. So a container like this will last you a lifetime if you get into doing this even on a regular basis. What you want to do is just mix that pinch of uh, gum tragacanth in the water, mix it up thoroughly, and let it sit for at least 12 to 24 hours. You want it to hydrate and really become in solution with the water. Now, I've got a brass brush, an agate burnisher, and a tungsten burnisher. What do these all have in common? They're burnishing tools. Yes, the brass brush burnishes. A lot of people don't realize that. And here I have a brand new one that's nice and soft. I would recommend working with a newer brass brush when you work with this process because if you use an older one that's kind of stiff, you could actually kind of scrape off a piece of gold that's not perfectly adhered to your piece. So you might want to work with something that's a little softer so you can be a little bit more gentle as you, as you brass brush your pieces. I also have a, a pair of tweezers with a very sharp point on them. Now these are commonly found in say like first aid kits, but you can get these from jewelry suppliers as well. I just have an ordinary paintbrush and here I have a pair of manicure scissors. I want a pair of scissors that it's very, very sharp in order to cut my gold. Now, over here, I've got the gold. Let me remove the covering. Now, this piece of gold is a 23.5 carat piece of gold. So, it's just barely not pure gold. And you can see it has a beautiful color. And when you buy this, you can purchase it, by the way, from Rio Grande. Uh, when you buy it, you're going to get about a three by three inch piece of gold. I've used mine, so it's cut, been cut down quite a bit. But that three by three inch piece of gold will go a long way, but take care of it. You don't want it to get wrinkled or dented or work hardened in any way. You want it to stay very, very uh, soft and supple. Uh, the other thing about this is, Remember, it's a gold foil. It's not gold leaf. It's much thicker. Now, it's 0 0.000142 inches in thickness, so it's still pretty thin, though. All right, now, moving over here, I've got a little piece that we're going to work on. This is actually a piece of frosted sterling silver. And we have a video on how to frost your metal, and it's very, very important that you frost the silver to the point that you raise a nice thick layer of fine silver. And over here, I have got a pendant that kind of looks like a koi fish swimming. That was a, uh, a cuttlefish casting. And if you look on top of it, you can see that there are little gold elements. 
this is what Kumbo looks like when you're finished with it. Now, the gold was applied to the silver casting, and then it was liver of sulfur to this dark, dark color so that the gold would stand out like the spots on that one of those calico looking koi fish that you might see in a pond. Another thing that I have is eye protection. You want to be sure to protect your eyes. And like I said, safety is very, very important in this process because you do have the possibility of burning yourself if you're not careful around the hot plate. Okay, so let's talk about dealing with the gold. First thing is I'm going to use my tweezers and I've already cut a smaller piece of the gold right here. And you can see that as I handle it, the gold is contained in between pieces of tissue paper. The tissue paper helps to keep the gold in sort of a rigid form. And that makes it a little bit easier to cut as well. Now, when you do this, it's recommended that you use smaller pieces of gold. If you use much larger pieces, they sometimes don't adhere completely. They may curl on the edge or they might even fall off but I'm going to cut slightly larger than I would normally do when I do this type of work. Usually I cut by maybe like two millimeters by two millimeters. So you make a little fringe and then just cut through it. Okay, and you can see I have little pieces of gold now right there. There's a good one. So the tissue paper you just need to take off. So let's start to turn on our hot plate. Now, you want to set your hot plate on about medium high and just position your piece somewhere on the burner so that it doesn't fall through. And I do recommend that you have two burnishers because one of them you may use to actually hold your piece down while you burnish with the other one. So like I said, I've got an agate and a tungsten burnisher. You might find that the smaller point of the tungsten burnisher works better on a texture where the wide edge of the onyx burnisher is good for doing a large flat surface. Now you notice I'm working on just a little sample here. It's not a finished piece of jewelry. This is a finishing process. It's something that you would do towards the end of your manufacturing. But when you're first learning the technique, it's a good idea to have a little practice plate that you can work on so you get the hang of it. Okay, so I can feel this is warming up. And what I want to do is basically grab a piece of the gold with a damp brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay it on there. I'll pull, pull the corner of the gold so that I can lay it on top of the silver. Now you can see how there's a little bit of a darkening that happens. That's completely normal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the plate with the tungsten burnisher and now I'll just take the agate burnisher and I'm just going to start to uh, burnish it down to the surface of the silver. You can change your hand position however you want and yes by the way I do know jewelers who have uh, oven gloves that they wear when they do this in order to be able to keep their hands over the the uh, top of the hot plate a little bit longer. So you basically want to work your way out from the center of this piece and smooth out any wrinkles or anything that is uh, making the piece of gold not just go right on top of that surface. Okay, so I'm done with that. I can pick this up. And now I'm just going to set it on something to cool. So that's how you basically do the technique. But let's put it on something a little bit more interesting. I have a casting of a Buddha. And this is a highly textured piece and it is a casting. So it's a little bit thicker. So let's put it on to the burner. It's going to take a little bit longer for it to heat up. So let's see here. Let me cut a little bit more gold. And we'll just apply something onto the, the costume of the Buddha. Remember, your scissors need to be nice and sharp for this process. 
I learned this technique about 15 years ago from a Korean expert named Camelio Kim. She literally travels the world and teaches people this technique. And you'll find it's used by many, many jewelers around the world. Got my piece of gold. And let's see here, I want to apply some of my gum tragacanth to it. And I will bring it over to the Buddha. You can hear kind of a sizzle. There we go. Now I'm going to hold this Buddha down while I use the agate burnisher to just burnish this piece of gold onto the Buddha. So when you're working with something that has a lot of texture like this, you need to make sure that you're getting on all the, the edges down, tacked down and that you're really running the burnisher over all of those little funny rises and dips and contours of your piece. Looks like I got every single piece of it. Okay, so let me set my tools down and I will remove my Buddha from the burner and turn it off. Don't want to burn your house down or your studio. Now I'm going to let these cool down for a second. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pickle them and I'll come back and I'll show you what the results look like. Everything's out of the pickle pot and here are the results. Now remember, the thing that we started with was this little rectangular piece of frosted silver and I put that one little gold square on it. Now that doesn't look like much, but this is how you learn. You have to do some trial and error before you really master a process. So like I said, you may want to experiment, but let's talk about this for a second. I could have covered a surface like that with a random pattern of gold, or I could have made an outline of a design, or anything's possible with this technique. And remember, it's an enhancement to your already beautiful form that you made. Now, the other piece, the casting, it came out nice, and I could have added a lot more gold to it as well, but we wanted to keep the video short for you. So, Remember that this is a great way to increase the price point on your jewelry, especially when you're first trying to sell. Small investment in gold goes a long way to make your piece look pretty fancy. I hope you liked this video. There are many more videos like this on our website at onlinejewelryacademy.com. Don't forget, we regularly post to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you're not a subscriber to our channel yet, click the button in the lower right hand corner of your screen and you'll instantly become a subscriber. Don't forget to like the video. And if you want to help us to produce future videos, you can do so by making a contribution on patreon.com. Thank you very much for watching.